Welcome back guys. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to sand, smooth, seal, and paint your 3D printed parts for very professional looking results. And this method should work on just about any rigid 3D printed material. And so I'm gonna be demonstrating this process on some 3D printed parts here that I designed and printed in two pieces because a single piece wouldn't fit on my print bed. And you'll probably run into the same problem if you're printing anything for a vehicle. Uh, like these parts are gonna be used on a rear bumper. And so vehicles typically have parts that are probably too big to fit on a small 3D printer bed. And so what I've done here is I've designed the parts to obviously fit together like this, but on the backhand side, there's some provisions here for some nuts and bolts to draw these pieces together. And up top here, you can see the mirror image of that part, and it's already been bolted together, but you can definitely still see the interface line here. And if you look under certain light, you can kind of see where the printer has approximated a curved surface. And so even if your part that you're working on is a single part and not two pieces, this process is gonna work to remove also the visibility of the individual layers of your 3D print. And as well as, like I said, that sort of interface line on two parts that you may be gluing or bolting together. And so to start, the first thing I've done here is I've taken a hobby knife like this one and I've basically just ran it along this edge here, that interface edge with the other part, to create a very small and very slight chamfer. This is gonna give us a good starting point where then we can use a bit of super glue and we can apply the super glue to the mating faces on both sides. And we can use some clamps like these guys here, basically just to clamp the piece together while the glue dries. We can also use our tiny little fasteners here to secure the two pieces together while that glue dries, making sure nothing moves during the process of smoothing and sealing these parts. So now that the parts are bolted together and the super glue has cured, we're gonna be taking our small sanding block here with some 220 grit sandpaper, and we're gonna focus on taking down some of the high spots in this print. And so you can see right along this edge, there is a print seam that I wanna get rid of. Personally, I find this extremely annoying to deal with, um, but it is a reality of 3D printing. So we're gonna knock that down and we're gonna be very careful not to go too aggressive on the sanding. We just wanna take down these high spots and we definitely don't wanna sand through our walls here to expose our infill. We are going to be also focusing on this seam here. And so I'm just gonna smooth that out and make sure when I run my hand over it, there isn't any edge that my fingers will catch. Other than that, the print is gonna come out looking a little bit rough, but that's okay because we're actually just roughing it up for our Bondo and for our primer to stick in the next layers. So again, not so aggressive, just take down some of the high spots. And so you can see when I start to sand, you'll see that the high spots come up as a sort of lighter whitish color on this black print and the low spots remain dark because they have not been hit by that sandpaper. And so I'm gonna continue this process until I can kind of get a nice even sort of look across that flat surface with the sanding block. And the sanding block is gonna make sure that I'm applying even pressure along that surface so that we don't get any sort of waviness after sanding. So after a little bit of sanding, these parts are starting to look a lot more uniform. The print seam is gone along the top. This seam is still definitely noticeable and we're gonna take care of that in a moment but this part is ready to be cleaned up. And so I'm gonna to to use some rubbing alcohol and some paper towels to clean the dust off. And I'm also gonna use an air gun to blow any dust I can out of this seam here so that we can apply some Bondo and then we can get sanding again. With the parts now cleaned up with the rubbing alcohol and compressed air, we're ready to get to work with the Bondo glazing and spot putty. Now this stuff is intended for auto body use, but it works great on 3D printed parts. Now it's only meant to fill in small imperfections and so we're gonna be working on these low spots. And for me in particular, I wanna fill in this void here along this seam. And so the directions recommend that you don't apply too thick of a layer. Thick layers are prone to cracking. So we're gonna do some very thin layers. We're gonna start bridging this void here. We're gonna be sanding it with 320 to 400 grit sandpaper in, like I said, very thin applications until we can fill in this low spot and get it nice and smooth with the glazing putty. And so this is what your part is probably gonna look like after your first layer of Bondo. Whatever you do, do not stress about trying to get this first layer perfect. The Bondo is not gonna go on perfectly smooth and you're gonna knock off a lot of this Bondo with your next stage of sanding. 
And so we're gonna let this cure overnight, and it's the box says it's gonna take only about half an hour, but I'm gonna let it sit overnight, and I'm gonna come back with some 320 to 400 grit sandpaper. We're gonna, like I said, knock off most of this Bondo here, and we're gonna be left with this seam here being filled with the Bondo. Now, if you don't have a seam and you have a single piece part, you're gonna go around your part and you're gonna find those low spots and you're gonna start to fill them in with the Bondo, just the way that I did here. And they're gonna look like darker areas, on your 3D printed part. I printed in black, and so the darker areas are my low spots, the whiter areas are the high spots that the sandpaper hit. But if you print it in another color, it's gonna be the darker areas. The really bad spots, like I said, you're gonna wanna fill in with the Bondo putty, and then we'll hit it up with some sandpaper. So now we're back after letting the glazing putty cure overnight, and we're ready to tackle the second stage of sanding. So I'm gonna take my part here and I got my sanding block again with a 320 to 400 grit sandpaper. And we're just gonna be knocking down all of the high spots that we created with the glazing putty. And so inside the seam, that's hopefully gonna go untouched and we're gonna fill in that seam, bridge that gap while smoothing out the transition between these two halves of the part. So after sanding, I used the rubbing alcohol and a clean cloth to wipe down these parts. And you can still see in the seam that there's a little bit of a low spot there and I can actually feel it with my finger. And so at this point, it's a rinse and repeat process. I'm gonna apply the Bondo. I'm gonna knock down the high spots again with the sanding block. And we're gonna continue to build up those low spots until everything is nice and smooth. And really the only thing to keep in mind at this point is in between your applications of Bondo, make sure you thoroughly clean your parts. You don't wanna leave any sort of dust behind because the Bondo won't stick to the dust and neither will paint later on. So it's important to keep these things clean after you sand them. And so after about four to five iterations of the Bondo and sanding, we're at the point now where the transition between the two halves is extremely smooth and I can no longer feel that seam. And so now I can go around the part here and find very, very minor imperfections like pinholes and I can use the glazing putty to spot fill. So I'll just take a little bit on my finger, of course I'll be wearing a glove, and I'm just gonna apply it to those pinholes or small, small imperfections and then we can lightly sand over that once it dries and we'll be left with a completely smooth surface void of any of those small imperfections. And so here you can see the small areas that I filled with the Bondo and my latex glove. So I just took a little bit of Bondo on the tip of my finger and I spread it into those pinholes or other very tiny imperfections. We're gonna give it one final pass for the sandpaper. And so we're finally done with the Bondo. I've hit it with some 400 grit sandpaper to finish it off. And then of course, just a last sanding with some 800 grit sandpaper for an ultra smooth finish. And then we're ready for the filler primer. So this is a Rust-Oleum high build formula filler primer. I think again, this is meant for auto body use. And we're gonna lay on a few thin coats to start and we're gonna knock down any high spots. And this should take care of the very small variations in the 3D printing layers. So we're gonna build those up and the seam has already been taken care of with the Bondo and so we'll end up with a very smooth finish. So again, just a light uh, application of the filler primer, some light sanding, come back with the filler primer maybe two or three times and we'll have ourselves a very, very smooth finish for our last application of paint. And so here we are with one coat of the primer done and one round of sanding with some 400 grit sandpaper. You can see down the center here where the Bondo was applied, things are looking extremely smooth. And on the outside where there was no Bondo, you can see the evidence of the 3D printed layers is starting to disappear. And so with subsequent applications of the uh, primer and some sanding, we are gonna be completely smooth and we'll be ready for paint. At this point in the process, also keep in mind that you can always come back with the Bondo spot filler and fill in those stubborn spots that you just can't seem to fill in with the filler primer. And so you can see here that I've done that after laying down a few layers of the filler primer and it's gonna stick just fine. I'm gonna sand it down again and it's gonna be nice and smooth after I clean it up and we're ready to apply another layer of the filler primer. And so with the final coat of primer applied, you can really see how smooth of a surface finish we have achieved. And so I don't really see any more little voids or pinholes or anything left in the part. And also looking at a test piece here I had from earlier in the process of test fitting these 3D printed parts, you can definitely see the difference in surface quality. Here you can obviously see the layers that are very evident. And here I don't see any evidence of layers anymore. So at this point we are ready for the final coating of paint and then clear coat. And so to achieve the final color on these parts, I'm gonna be using another Rust-Oleum product, and this is just their universal paint. It's a metallic paint, paint and primer in one. 
It claims it'll work on any surface, wood, metal, plastic, or masonry. So it should be good considering our substrate here is plastic. So we're gonna blast on a couple layers of this. Remember, go with light coats so we don't get any runs in our paint. Otherwise, we gotta go back to sanding and then we should be good to clear coat these parts. So let's take a look at what's gonna look like with a light coat of the metallic paint. And so now I'm back after a few coats of paint and the surface looks extremely uniform. And so the last thing to do here is to finish the job with some clear coat. So I just have some Krylon clear coat here. It's a non-yellowing clear coat. And this should give us a satin finish, which I'm looking for to match the rest of the trim on the car. And so we're gonna be back in a second here with the clear coat done, and we'll be able to see the final product and actually do a test fit. So after filming the original conclusion for this video, I thought maybe waiting a few months and showing you the outcome after a few months of having the parts installed on the car would lend a little more credibility to this video. And so here you can see a bunch of still images of the rear diffuser that I 3D printed and we just finished here through this video that has been installed in the car now in the hot summer for about three months now. And it's been performing excellent. I don't see any signs of these prints uh, warping in the sunshine because that was originally my concern was maybe the heat would get to them. And uh, you can see even on the one side there, I have my exhaust kind of close to that one printed part on the left hand side. On the right hand side, I still haven't gotten around to actually doing the dual exhaust on the car, but the hot exhaust hasn't affected the prints either. So I would call this thing a success, and I would say that you should be able to use 3D printed parts on your car. And so that concludes this video guys. If you guys have any questions, please don't be shy. Leave them in the comment section down below, and I will be happy to get back to you guys as soon as possible. As always, thanks for watching.